Jamal Murray was a rookie. He started his NBA career by missing his first 17 shots in a row. I can't really quite imagine what that feels like to know you are in the top 1% of humans on earth at putting a round ball through a round hoop and yet suddenly you just can't for some reason. It was particularly devastating for Murray, who had been training for that moment since he was literally a baby. Seriously, you can go back and read the excellent story ESPN's Jackie McMullen wrote on Murray earlier this year, where she details how Murray's father raised Jamal in an almost army-like environment designed to create the perfect player. At seven years old, Jamal had to hit 30 free throws in a row before he could stop practicing for the day. When it got cold in Murray's native Ontario, Jamal's dad would have him practice dribbling on ice to improve his balance. In the Murray house, if that <laughs> ball didn't go through the net, you were running some hills, sometimes backward. So it's no surprise that until Murray worked himself out of that rough start he had as a rookie, he felt like the walls were caving in. Now let's fast forward to now, Jamal's third year in the NBA. He was a huge part of the Nuggets' sweetheart season and was certainly expected to help push Denver past the Spurs in the opening round of these playoffs. Except in game one, he shot just 33% from the field, missed all six of his three-point attempts, and he also missed that potential go-ahead shot with 10 seconds to play in that game. And in game two, well, yeah, see those bricks? <laughs> his first three quarters were about as ugly as you can get. He was a minus 18 in his 24 first minute, shooting 0 for 8 mm. with just two assists. Here's Coach Mike Malone and what he told Jamal at halftime. He was so frustrated at halftime, you know, and not making shots, shots that he's made his whole career. And then I, I just grabbed him. I said, listen, take a deep breath. You're putting so much pressure on yourself. Every shot right now is like the end of the world. Uh, you know, I believe in you. I love you. Just go out there and play. That's great advice. It, it, however, didn't actually work. By midway through the third quarter, Jamal was still struggling, and the Nuggets went down by 15. Then Malone sent Murray to the bench for a breather, and the reserves went on a run to cut the Spurs' lead to five points. So, look, strong argument, right, for just leaving things that way. From Malone to tell the kid, hey, just sit tight the rest of the way. It's just not your night. But again, not for Malone. I knew in my heart he needed to get these minutes. He needed to be out there. I needed to show him that I believed in him. That's powerful. If I pull him, does coach really believe in me? Does he have my back? So I, I had to stay with Jamal, make or miss, because he's our guy, and, and I care about him. And, and he came through in a big way, but never once did I think about pulling him from the lineup. Very nice. And this time, it paid off. Early in the fourth quarter, Murray made a little pull-up jumper that opened the floodgates. You got this beautiful layup, right? That was nice. A little step back coming. Woo, there we go. Shooter shoot. Nuggets shoot. finally Rachel, had the shooter, lead. Shoot. And just to be this sure, that Brady arrow line. over shooter, Derek shoot, White. Baby. The crowd going nuts. Jamal's teammates going nuts. But Murray wasn't even done. He would go on to hit another three in transition. Honestly, the man was so on fire that when in the press conference afterward, he wore an NBA Jam t-shirt with his own picture on it. it. It almost felt understated. So did Murray just save the Nuggets season? We don't know yet. The series is now tied at 1-1, moving to San Antonio, where the Spurs had a ridiculous 32-9 home record this mm. year. But I do know this. No one is more devastated by a rough start than Jamal Murray, who's already had his share. And no one is more determined to fight their way out of it either. We will now see if the Nuggets can follow his lead. So T-Mac did that explosion you saw in the fourth quarter you just said. It only takes one, right? And it opens the floodgates. Did it change your view of what the Nuggets can do in the series? No, not at all. <laughs> Actually, I'm not encouraged. Really? Because, no, because yet again, in game two, when... You, you get beat in the first game, right? You have home court advantage. So you get beat, home court advantage goes to the next team. You come back in game two and try to make some adjustments. Those adjustments really didn't work. They were down 19 in this game. San Antonio just really lost themselves on the defensive end and gave up 38 points, 39 points in the fourth quarter. And it took a heroic effort by a guy that was struggling for the first you know, game in, in three quarters to go crazy in the fourth quarter, score 21 of his 24 points. I'm still I'm not encouraged going back to San Antonio 1-1 you haven't won in San Antonio since 2012. That's back crazy. They just weren't that, a good road team right? this that's year at all. That's a crazy they number. They haven't won in San Antonio since 2012 and you think they're going to go in there now? I don't think so. I, I think this team is really in trouble. Well boy Denver when they get going they look so good. Their offensive firepower is so impressive. Gary Harris had a really good game in this one. Um, 
it did take maybe the hottest guy we're going to see <laughs> in the hottest stretch of the whole postseason, maybe. I mean, I, I, my mouth you're, was agape at how awesome that was. And it wasn't settled. I mean, it wasn't settled until he did that. Okay, have you heard of Steph Curry? Because I, I still believe well, we will see a quarter from Steph sometimes in these playoffs that might play, surpass this. Yeah, but, and play. And yeah. Damian. And, <laughs> boy, was it awesome in that moment. Yes. Um, I actually wondered, because he had Jokic out of the game also during the yes. big comeback. No, I know. I was like, I wonder if he's going back to Jokic. He did, but only when Plumlee got into foul trouble. So <laughs> um, I respect everything that, that Mike said. Mm -hmm. You know what that made me think, Tracy? Was that even though they're the number two seed, you can even feel with, with what Mike said there that it's such a learning experience. Whereas the Spurs, this is not their first It is. Play. I mean, and, and I, I give Mike Malone and the Denver Nuggets a lot of credit. Like, I had these guys as one of the most more improved teams coming mm -hmm. into the beginning of the season. And I didn't see second seed, so kudos to them. But when I look at the playoff matchups, they're not a number two seed to me. They, they're not as strong as a number two seed to me in the Western Conference. It's a bad matchup for them. San Antonio, to me, is a better team, better well-coached team. And I, I think we're going to see... I don't even know if it's an upset because this team is a number two seed, but I think they're an experienced number two seed. So I think San Antonio will upset this year. I mean